Uh, good evening. Will the uh, Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, meeting of the Wilmot Public Library Board of Trustees please come to order? Uh, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Yes. <laughs> Trustee George. Here. Trustee Rogers. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Trustee O'Loughlin. Here. Trustee Barshas. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Here. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the July minutes. Uh, could I get a motion to so so move? to approve them. Uh, Stuart moved. You did. Se uh, any fine. discussion? No. Uh, me, uh, the uh, minutes have been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, the um, minutes are approved. I want to, at this moment, take the opportunity to welcome um, our observers from the League of Women Voters. Thank you so much for all the work that you do, mm -hmm. and thank you for taking the time to inform the people of Wilmette, uh, and we appreciate that you know, with any, you know, that people will become even more aware of all the things the various boards in the village do, including ours. So thank you. Uh, first item on our agenda is a presentation um, from Betty, uh, who's going to um, tell us about the Library of Things. Um, this has been a, what we call it. it. Oh, it's just in case. That's where exactly. our, our presenters. <laughs> Um, so, as you well know, it's a really collaborative project because it involves almost every department in the library. So we had a committee of circulation, mem members from circulation department, youth services, adult services, technical services, and shelving. All of those departments are affected by what we chose to um, start our collection with and how we processed it and how we make it available and what markets we're trying to um, uh, serve. So members were Colleen Reese, Linda Dahl, Patsy Devono, Karen Joshi, Jana Peel, Gail, and myself. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Yvonne Chang, who came in at the last, uh, the last breath to get us over the last hump of processing all the pieces that are in these various items. So they're not, it's not a simple book cataloging operation. Everything that goes out is labeled. Everything is listed as part of the item that is getting checked out. She um, is a part-time librarian who was recently hired, and she just took to it like a duck to water. She, <laughs> we gave her the task. She ran with it, and it, it, she really put it over the finish line. So thank you to her. So all of the items that are new in the Library of Things are checked out right now. So we're now uh, considering whether we want to buy additional um, items that uh, are on this list and what other items we might want to add. And I know that Jan has mentioned something that we will probably put in the next iteration of this collection, which is uh, binoculars and a birding book. Um, so binoculars they're and a birding, birding book. Okay. So, um, yeah. So they have been out about two and a half weeks. Gail did oh. a stellar job of cataloging and um, processing the items so that they could go out before the end of summer. How many items are there? Uh, we have total. To total, total. I wouldn't be able to say total. Um, there are nine separate items on the list, but we have multiple copies of most of those items. All of those items we have multiple copies of. So for instance, um, the Nooks, we have five copies. The iPads, we have three. I'm talking, I'm talking as if they're item uh, books, but they're not. They're um, packets. Packets, right. Yes. Wi-Fi hotspots, two. two. Um, Portable DVD players, four. four. Ozobots and Bbots, I believe, Three or two? Yeah, I'd have to look at the, you know, two at the. Two of each, I think. Yeah. So. And what ages are the B-Bots and the Ozobots? For? Those are primary and preschool kinds of mm -hmm. items. Although I'm sure parents are learning a lot about <laughs> two. Um, I'm just going to. Just hand them a copy just so sure. they can see. I, I should say that I tried out the hot 
uh, the hot spot on a vacation, which is Actually, what they're really there. terrific for if you're traveling. Right. And uh, I do not consider myself a technologically sophisticated person, and mm -hmm. it was great. It it worked great when you. I mean, a lot of hotels have them, but it's so you know yep. free Wi-Fi <laughs> now. But it was it's so annoying. This was just <laughs> smooth. And Pretty I really, seamless. It really was great, and um, I highly recommend them. Um, and I think I think the World Cup was going on, so my son was busy watching the World Cup, uh, <laughs> and it was fine. It was great. And Lisa, I'll come up with a count and let you know. Oh, no, I was just curious because it's two weeks, and I'm wondering if it should be one week given what it is. I'm I'm just curious in terms of circulation. Oh well, it's three. It's three. three. They go out for three weeks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the hot spot you need for more than a few days. I mean, if you're going on vacation, <laughs> you're you know, and taking the hot spot with you. Right. So three. the DVD players were another item that we thought might be useful on vacations the portable DVD player, so mm -hmm. we I mean, opted to go with the I mean, standard. It's, it's nice, it's also, I don't know, and in some ways, for some of those things, sort of environmentally sound, and says like, why should everybody have to buy a gadget that you're only gonna use for a week right. or two <coughs> at most mm -hmm. a year? And this is, you know, part of the sharing economy. The library, mm -hmm. library was the, you know, forerunner of the sharing economy. Exactly. Right. So I think um, it's really a smart thing to do. Great. Any, any other questions about it? No, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do, do, are there any other items that are being considered right now that you could share with us? Unless you already said that. Um, that anything that's being considered, like I could see like crafty type things being considered. I don't know. I mean, part of what we uh, initially went for were items that we hoped would be, um, would not uh, create difficult tracking problems in terms of pieces. Right, that mm -hmm. makes sense. And uh, <laughs> items that did not have to be replenished, so things that go out with other supplies that would need to be replenished. So so those are parts of our consideration, mm -hmm. but we are definitely open to suggestions for any items that you think might be useful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Any qu other questions? Okay. Um, thank you, Betty. Uh, the next item, public comment. Um, no members of the public wish to comment. We'll move on to the treasurer's report. Um, Ron? Briefly, we have money. <laughs> Real estate taxes um, have begun to come in from the second installments. Uh, we received $1.3 million in July. Um, those were early payments because they were not due until August, um, or August 1st. Uh, we received the per capita grant of 33858 and change, um, and our greatest expense was the insurance network, the health insurance for employees at 42811 um, Other expenses were the normal operating sorts of things for books, uh, CCS, um, and, uh, and some online services. Um, there's nothing extraordinary in the, in the budget information. Uh, July begins the new fiscal year. Um, so, you know, these numbers reflect that. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's nothing extraordinary in the bills and salaries. It's just normal operations. Um, I move approval of the bills and salaries for July. Okay, there's been a motion I'll to second. approve the bills and salary. Can we get a second of that? I'll second. Uh, Stuart, second. Mm -hmm. um, any further discussion? Um, Jan, can you call the roll, sure. please? Mm. Trustee George. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee Alarfon. Aye. Trustee Barshus. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Okay. Um, 
The uh, next item on the agenda, our only action item, is the approval of the uh, Illinois State Library Annual Report, somewhat affectionately referred to as the IPLA, um, which is something we approve every year. And it's of a form prescribed for us. We have no discretion about anything other than to fill in the numbers. <laughs> um, Although they, sometimes they have little interesting questions they decide to ask. I don't know, Gail or Betty, is there anything you want to say about the IPLAR report this year? Well, I'd like to thank the staff, because it's a staff effort to gather all this information and put it together. And Cynthia is the um, leader of the pack. So thank you very much for all the work you did on this. Even though it says my name, um, she really did right. most of the work. Um, I do know that CCS knows that all of the um, libraries have to fill out this report, and with the migration to Polaris, they are going to make the, at least the, the, the collection part and the circulation statistics much easier for us next year, because they're already, that's one of so the reporting tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can just pull. Whereas this time you had to go back and look at Circe and then look at Polaris and get all the numbers and put them together. So they're going to make that much easier for us. And we actually are going to look to see, to make it a little bit easier too in collecting data um, for next year as well. So, I mean, it, it's it's pretty similar to last year. Right. You know, I mean, it has inf interesting information. <laughs> and You like the salaries. <laughs> they had it as the salary information, not by staff person, but it, um, and they they sometimes have different things they, they focus on. A lot of it is just absolutely pro forma, like right. legal name of library, okay. well, map public library district. So it's not, right. um, you know, that exciting. Nonetheless, um, I think it is, I mean, you can get sort of maybe blasé about it, but I think it's good that this data is collected oh, yeah. so it's, you know, members of the public, if ever the, our state representatives um, of any sort, you know, need centralized data on what's out there in library land, this is, you know, a prescribed document that contains an awful lot of interesting very basic, but it's all there kind of information. Mm -hmm. Two questions. Is it published on the state or our website? It's on the state. State's the website. State. And then the other question is, is it possible if I want my library email as opposed to my personal email put in? Sure. Or does it matter? Mm -hmm. No, we can change that. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you want... I would, would think you? we would just want to do the library. Email. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just yeah. to change uh, it. Okay, now that's... you put the personal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and does the state use kit. that when they do give the per capita grant, or is that a separate? No, that's separate. yes. Okay. No, no, I think they do use this. Well, you have to file this yeah. in order to get your per capita, capita grant. <laughs> I don't think that I've seen any indication that they've used the information. I see. Right. If it's been filed, they don't contest the information. Right, but it's based on, isn't it based on the number of residents you serve, or people you serve, or not? The per Primarily. Capita, the per capita grant is, okay. With other adjustments that sometimes occur with, you know, in the legislature and the state library, mm -hmm. like when we didn't have a budget. <laughs> yes. Um, now we need to approve the submission as it as modified with changing the trustee emails. Mm -hmm. So, because that's listed as an action item. I move so. that we approve the annual report to the State Library as modified. I second it. I second um, Moved and second. Any further discussion or questions? No. Who seconded? I did, Lisa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, I think we can just do all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Um, take it home. Read it. <laughs> uh, yes, the landscape project. Um, Betty? Yes. Okay, so um, where we are now is um, Ritz, Mark Ritzman from our attorney um, consultant uh, talked a little bit with me about how we would proceed for a request for qualifications. Since we, since we think that this project will be an over $25,000 um, 
project for a construction management aspect, that would be the way to go. We would construct that request with the help of Ritzman and uh, Jody Mariano from Tesca Associates, mm -hmm. which is the architectural firm that has um, created the design and all of the specs. And those are already pretty much available. Uh, there's been recently there's been some discussion within the landscape committee around certain aspects of the design, um, and so that is ongoing. But that's where we're at right now. So do you, will we, we can just ask them for these qualifications. We don't, the board doesn't need to do anything to get, to, to move that step forward. Once Does we the board, get them, but I mean, we ask, you guys can ask them for the qualifications and then that will come before the board, right? That is my understanding. Okay, so we don't need to approve a request for, okay. So are there any major changes that was, were discussed by the committee as to what they want with the landscaping? Not, I, I wouldn't say they're major changes, but they are, um, they would impact 